acres. Uh, back out here again at the tiny house we're building. And uh, working on this roof here. Now I will tell you <clears throat> that a couple of weeks ago I did a video showing how I want to do this roof. And uh, then I read the comments, waited to see what people had to say, and all of the issues that were coming up, and did some more research, did a lot of research, and then tried to figure out, you know, snow loads and lateral movement and uplift and all kinds of structural engineering type stuff. Uh, and sure enough, what I've discovered, what I was going to do, I can't do. Um, these sheds, for lack of a better word, that you buy to convert a home, they leave a bit to be desired in some areas. And now that we have this out here, I'm discovering some of those areas. Uh, this particular model uh, this particular company where I got it. I mean, they did all these walls and floor joists and everything is to code for a home um, with the, you know, double top plates and it's exactly how I would build it. The roof, on the other hand, is just a shed roof. So, what you got to think about is if you order one and you're going to convert it, there's you know, things you have to do uh, structure-wise to the roof, um, especially with a slope like this one. Uh, this has such a small pitch to it that snow will stay on top of it for a while. And we're going to have it super insulated, so there's not going to be any heat getting up to melt it off. So I have to take that into consideration. <laughs> and while trying to figure out weights and loads and square inches and everything. Now one thing I did realize what 45 years ago in ninth grade in algebra class and having the attitude why am I learning this stuff? I'm never going to need this for the rest of my life. Why do I have to learn this? Well I wish I had paid more attention in al algebra class when it came to figuring out all this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is show you how I'm going to approach this now and what we're going to do with this ceiling or this roof in order to bring it more up to code and make it more safe. I don't wanna, you know, the thing is, I want this, this to last 25, 30 years. I don't want it to start failing in five years. And what will happen is this roof like this will, with the load, will eventually start bearing down and pushing the rafters out and possibly pushing the walls out. I mean, there will be a little bit of movement there. I, I don't think it's going to come crashing down, but we want to eliminate <coughs> even the chance of that. Uh, so one of the things that was suggested are these, these are like called hurricane ties. They're called raptor ties, but a lot of people don't call them hurricane ties. Because what it'll do, uh, if I get this close enough, this will nail up to the top plate, and then your raptor is coming down this way and it will nail into the side of the rafter. And what these are designed for is to protect against uplift uh, in you know high wind situations in hurricane areas uh, to keep the roof from blowing off your house. And they also aid in lateral movement uh, by tying those rafters to the walls. It, it doesn't get as much chance to spread out or separate 
which they can't do with the load. So these I'm going to put on every rafter in to the top plate. And because these have uh, two by four rafters, you know, I have to modify it a little bit. <laughs> I have to put a little bit of a bend in it. And I like it better going up against the top plate like this and then running along the length of the rafter and then five nails in the top, five nails into the top plate. You know, five nails into the rafter, five nails into the top plate. And that's going to be a huge help structurally with any of this stuff being able to move or to spread out or to slip or do anything. So that's step number one for uh, adding structural support to this roof system. So let me go ahead and put one of these on. I'll show you how I'm using it. So, so what I'm going to do is mount this like so. My drywall then will go over this and this, you know, this is going to be out of the way of the ceiling. So let me, with this bend in it, I have to get this in, make a few adjustments to it, you know, with my hammer, the delicate adjustment tool that it is. Uh, let me put a Got some more nails in. Now, we'll keep this from being able to lift up, this whole rope being able to lift up in the high wind, and we're out here on this hill, so we get plenty of high wind, and um, so it's not a bad idea to have it anyway. Plus, if this rafter were to ever give a little bit, it's going to stop it from going down in that direction because these rafters are simply nailed into this top plate. They don't have any other form of support. This does, this supports it beyond belief. So that's step number one in doing the ceiling. Now, if the camera person would go over there, let me get in the middle here. started this whole thing was I wanted to remove this and this ties into the walls together. Absolutely cannot remove this. So I have to work with this. You know my original plan was to get rid of this and run collar ties across here. Um, but I can't do that. I talked with uh, friend of mine who built houses for a living, he said, no, you can't remove that. And I talked online with a structural engineer, I sent him pictures, 
to get his advice and he said leave those in there if you really want to make it strong and make it the way it's supposed to be then add one of these every four feet so every other raptor is going to get one of these raptor ties these are raptor ties that's a collar tie and what that's supposed to do is protect the ridge beam from, you know, keep the raptors from separating from the ridge beam would be the collar ties. But we don't have a ridge beam here. I'm going to put them up for decorative purposes so I can bring my ceiling up to a point, run it across, and then down the other side. But what to do with these? Because I don't want to just nail drywall up and have a flat ceiling in here. I need to try to give it the feel of being bigger. So what we'll do, I'm going to put double tuba boards across every other wrap. So every four feet I'm going to have a double tuba four running across here, tied into the wall and tied into the roof. So, instead of them having one every 10 feet, I'm going to have one every 4 feet. And I'm going to have a double. Hey, you're tall here. Imagine that. Uh, and by doing the double, it serves two purposes. I have double the amount of holding power. <laughs> but then, to finish it off, I'm going to take some 1x4 stock and wrap these double 2 before in the one by four stock, probably oak, then we'll stain it, and it'll look like we have beams running across here. It'll give it a nice effect by having beams running across. And that's the decorative aspect of it. It adds all the structure to it, but it also decorates it, and it will look kind of cool being a small house. The same with the collar ties I'm going to put on. Now those are going to go on every raptor, my collar ties. Uh, again, that's just going to add strength to that structure and I'm telling you by the time you put those hurricane straps on every raptor around here, this, those metal things are going on every one. So by the time all those are on, double two before raptor beams are going up, and a collar ties, you could land a helicopter on top of here. And I don't think it's going to affect it too much. At least that's according to the guy I was talking to online. But that's how um, you have to add structural integrity to these things. So that's how, you know, I plan on doing it. I'm not going to do anything for a week. Until I see all the responses, see what people think about it. If there's something I'm missing or something I shouldn't do, I have obviously enough subs who are skilled in this that I'm not that led me in the right direction. Uh, the only complaint I get had against you guys doing that was the research you made me do and the studying you made me do. And figuring out how to figure all this shit out. Uh, so, again, I mean, that's why I have this channel. That's why I don't do a whole lot at first. I come out here, I explain what I want to accomplish, show how I'm going to accomplish it, upload the video, and then wait to see the responses and wait to see the comments and the suggestions. But I think when I'm finished with this, framing of this roof, we're going to have us a nice, you know, solid roof in this house then. And on this half, I'm going to have the raised cathedral type ceiling effect. From the bathroom, you know, where I frame in the bathroom and the bedroom and everything, that's just going to be a flat ceiling. Going, I'm just going to run regular, you know, ceiling joists across, tie it into the top plate and the rafters, and then, you know, just run drywall over the top. So that half will be a flat ceiling. 
we wanted to worry about. This was the area I needed to figure out, you know, how to make them look good. They have to be there for function, so let's turn them into something decorative. And I think wrapping them in oak and staining them, it's going to be a nice effect with our barn out here. And it, it'll give a good feel to it. But those are, if you're out looking at these buildings, again, look at how the roof is done. You know, think about snow loads, think about wind, you know, all of that, how you're going to finish the inside, think about what you want, you know, and then go from there. Uh, the walls on this model were perfect, two, 16 inches on center, everything to spec. Uh, again, the roof leaves a bit to be desired. It's a shed roof on a house, you know. Uh, so we'll fix it up. But that's an, an added, you know, two or $300 expense, plus the hours of labor involved in doing all this framing to make it safe. And that's what I want to do. I want it to be safe and I want it to last a long time. And uh, I have plenty of time to do that. So I'll also put in my disclaimer, this is not a how-to channel. I am not a builder. <laughs> I'm showing you how I'm doing it. This is for entertainment purposes only. And uh, they'll go build something and it fall down and then send your lawyers after me because St. Bernard Acres ain't paying. Because I'm not giving you advice. I'm showing you what I'm doing and you can laugh at it. That's what this is all about. But uh, I'll upload this tonight. This is Saturday, the 31st of October. Happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, and I'll upload this and then I'll wait a few days, see the comments and see if, you know, it seems to work for everybody. Uh, that, you know, that should add all of the structure I need. Then I can proceed with it. Uh, we'll buy all the material break right out here and I'll spend a day reframing all the roof. But this is Joe and Gail, the cameraman, uh, camera person, uh, out of St. Bernard Acres. We'll talk to you later.